one of the most useful features when it comes to engineering elite is the ability to pin blueprints at various engineers. And today I'm going to run through the list of engineers and we're going to talk about which blueprints you should pin at what engineer. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. So we're going to run through the list and I'm going to run through two different situations here. First, we're going to run through the list and how I would spec it up if you only have access to the engineers in and around the bubble. That means not with the engineers out in Colonia. If you're also going to pin blueprints out of Colonia, we are towards the end of the video also going to talk about how you can swap things around to make it a little bit more optimized if you get access to those engineers out there as well. But first, we're going to have a look at the lists if you just have access to the engineers in and around the bubble. First, we're going to have a look at Elvira Matsuk and Farsia. They, of course, both have the Great 5 Frameshift Drive blueprint, and it's probably one of the best blueprints you can pin. So at either of those, you have to pin Frameshift Drive with increased range. What you pin at the other one of the two is pretty much up to you. Um, they don't have a whole lot of very useful blueprints, but if you can find something that you feel is, is nifty, then yeah, sure, go ahead and uh, and pin whatever you like. But make sure that at least one of them has a increased range frame shift drive. Next on the list, we have the Dweller. Um, the Dweller, of course, specializes in power distributors. It's the only one that does grade five. So here we are going to pin a power distributor blueprint. And I recommend going charge enhanced. It is one of the most useful in the majority of builds. And this is a common theme you will see as we begin to progress through this list, that the blueprints I pin is the one that will be useful in the majority of cases. There will always be situations where you would rather want a engine-focused or weapon-focused power distributor. But in those special cases, you're just going to fly to the engineer and do it um, at the base. But in the majority of builds, you want a charge enhanced. So that's why I would recommend that you, uh, that you pin the power distributor charge enhanced blueprint here. Tut the Blaster specializes in multi cannons, so we're going to pin a Great 5 multi cannon blueprint. I've gone with Overcharged, but again, you can pin any blueprint you like, whatever your playstyle is. If you prefer to go more efficient, then go that. If you want something else, then then pick that. But I've gone with uh, with Overcharged. Um, and again, multi cannons is one of those weapons that you are most likely going to use on a lot of different builds. I mean, anything that needs to be able to defend itself against NPCs, the multi cannon is a great choice. So having the ability to quickly access that blueprint with an overcharged multi cannon, I think is always a, a good option. Next up, we have Liz Ryder, who specializes in missiles. Not the modular uses the most, but I personally think it's nice to have in case you need it. And I've gone with Sika missiles with high capacity, but you can pretty much pin any grade five blueprint she does. Uh, so that would be dump fire missiles, Sika missiles or torpedoes. Next up, we have Yuri Ismak. Um, he has two interesting blueprints. He has the sensors, Great 5, and he has the detailed surface scanner. I've gone with the detailed surface scanner here with expanded probes. Um, of course, you really only need this engineered in cases where you're actually going to map planets, so that would be on exploration builds. But again, we're gonna get the sensors somewhere else, so this is why I've just decided to get the detailed surface scanner um, from Yuri Ismak. Next on the list, we have Nemo, who is the guy who specializes in fragmentation cannons. So I would recommend you pin one of their, those blueprints, so you get the Great 5 frag cannon blueprint, but pick anyone you like. I mean, double shot is always fun, um, overcharged, efficient, it's really depend on your playstyle, what kind of weapons you like. At Nemo, I would say any fragmentation blueprint um, is a solid choice. Li Chung, again, this is a no-brainer. He is the shield generator guy. I've gone for thermal resistance. Um, I prefer to use thermal resistance on my shield generators, but if you're more into the hit point side of it, you can go with reinforced. It really depends on what you do a lot of in the game. If you make a lot of like uh, PvP builds or anti-Sino builds, then maybe going reinforced is a better option here. Then we have the Colonel. Um, not really a lot of useful blueprints here. Um, I've gone with the frameshift drive interdictor 
uh, with a long range blueprint on it. I personally don't do a lot of PvP. If you do a lot of PvP, then of course this will be a very useful engineer to have that interdictor. But for me, well, it's very rare that I use the, the FSD interdictor. So not the most useful blueprint. But again, if you're gonna pick something, go with an interdictor with long range. Next up, we have Celine Jane. And here you have. You have a bit of an option here, depending on uh, on, on what kind of playstyle you like. Um, she both does the armor to grade 5 and hull reinforcements to grade 5. I've gone with armor because, again, I'm going to go for the one that is useful in the most situations. I mean, you will have armor on all your ships. And I've gone with that armor heavy duty blueprint because heavy duty on the lightweight alloys that you come stuck with on your ship... It only gives you the benefit of increased armor and a little bit extra resistance with not getting the drawback of increased mass because the lightweight alloy has zero mass, so a percentage increase to zero will always be zero. Then we have here Atani, um, power plant, and again, I would definitely recommend going for overcharged. It's by far the one I used in the majority of my builds because you can always need more power. And it's annoying if you're sitting and you're making a build and you're trying to get uh, you begin to go out to get all your experimental effects on, which we'll come back to in a bit. You're going out, you want to get all your experimental effects on. You have to begin sit and shut off, shutting off modules because you don't have the power. But having the overcharge blueprint available in the remote workshop means you can remotely upgrade that power plant. Um, so hopefully you will have enough power to keep uh, your build running. Now I want to jump on to Marco Quint, the one everybody loves to hate. And again, he doesn't really have a whole lot of useful blueprints, but what I have actually pinned at him is also a power plant upgrade um, but this time I've gone for low emission now he only does it to grade 4 but I have actually never been in a situation where I needed a grade 5 low emission engineer I mean you get a lot of drawback on your power output of the power plant so it's often you would only need like grade 2 3 in rare cases 4 on your build when you're using your low emission so therefore I think going with a, a engineer that only does, does it to grade 4 is okay and it just gives you some options again with your power plant if you're doing a really, really cold build or if you're doing a very low powered build. Then you have the option to get some um, some extra efficiency out of your, your ship. At Ramtar, I have pinned the ammo capacity blueprint for heat sinks. Any build that uses heat sinks, it's always nice getting that one extra charge out of them. So having that available through the remote workshop is really, really nice. Next up, we have the Sarge. He does cannons, which... Well, it's a nice option if you like to use cannons, but it's, again, it's one of those weapons that you really, really rarely use. And he actually has another blueprint that is a lot more useful, I think, in many situations. And that is the uh, lightweight collector limpet blueprint. I mean, imagine the number of builds where you would use collector limpets. Again, in PvE builds, it's nice to have a collector. In mining builds, it's nice to have a collector. If you're doing PvP, it's nice to have a collector. If you're doing target hunting, it's nice to have a collector. That's Pretty much no build where I wouldn't consider putting a collector limpet on it. Next up, we have uh, Didi, which is, of course, shield boosters. Um, you can either go with resistance augmented or you can go with heavy duty. I've gone with heavy duty here because uh, in all the builds where I use resistance augmented, I would always also use some heavy duty, but there are also builds where I would go exclusively for heavy duties. So... Because of that, I think the one that you will need the most of is the heavy-duty ones. Next up, we have Traquin here, and he does the beam lasers. He's the grade 5 beam laser guy. Um, so here I've gone with beam lasers with an efficient blueprint. Next up, we actually have two engineers. I want to do both Palin and Chloe at the same time, because they're pretty much just a copy page of each other. It's the exact same engineer. Of course, now Palin has been moved into the bubble. And yes, Chloe is out in the Witch Head Nebula, so she's technically not in the bubble. But if you're unlocking Paling, Palin, it's a really small amount of extra work to also unlock Chloe. So here I would probably, at Palin, I would pin the, uh, the Dirty Drive Thruster Blueprint. And at Chloe, I would then uh, take the Thruster Clean Drives. Next up, we have Laurie Jameson. Um, here I've gone with Life Support, Lightweight. I mean... There is really no other blueprint in my mind to put on um, on life support. Going lightweight just, again, increases your jump range, and there's no reason not to get that extra jump range. And again, it's one of those blueprints with no experimental effects, so again, having that accessible in remote work should just mean it's one less engineer you will have to visit. Then we have Bill Turner. He does plasma accelerators, which in this case, you have a variety of options here. Um, for PAs, is a weapon that can, in some cases, be quite fun, and is also, if you're used to fixed weapon, can be really, really efficient when it comes to hunting uh, NPCs. 
You can either go with efficient, focused, or long range. It really depends on your play style and how you like to engineer your um, your PAs. But if you have to pin anything at Bill, I would recommend you go for something uh, plasma accelerated. Finally, we have Tiana Fortune, and of course here we need our sensors. That's the last core module we haven't picked a blueprint for yet, so we're gonna go again lightweight. Sensors are heavy, it's the same with life support, there's no experimental effects, so getting that out of the way really quickly just helps increase your jump range when you're building ships early on. That's the list for the engineers in the bubble, and now I just wanna quickly talk about what you do with your experimental effects, because many of you will now sit and think, but I have to visit the engineers anyway to get my experimental effects, and yes, you're right. But if you upgraded the module, even though you upgraded it to grade 5 through the remote workshop, you can still go to an engineer that maybe only does grade 1, and you can apply the experimental effect there. And because there's a lot of engineers that can do the, a variety of blueprints, that means once you're done with all your normal engineering, which you can hopefully access the majority of them through the, um, through the remote workshop, you can then the few engineers that you have to actually go and visit where you need specialized uh, builds that you haven't pinned or specialized blueprint that you haven't pinned, there's a good chance that they'll be able to apply experimental effects on some of your other modules because even though they might only be able to, to engineer to grade one, they can still apply experimental effects even though the module has already been engineered all the way to grade five. And there's no drawbacks, no, no anything uh, like you get less out of it for, for applying it with that engineer. So that's why uh, you can often skip a lot of engineers and in majority of cases when I'm doing builds, I end up visiting maybe two or three engineers and that's all I need. Then I have all the engineers, all the special effects that I need. Now let's have a look at how this list changes as we begin to include engineers out from Colonia. And the first one I want to talk about is it Etina Dawn. Not sure how that's pronounced, but well. He's actually the only one in the game that does um, grade 5 life supports. So far we had life support at Laurie Jameson, who only does it to grade 4. He does it all the way to grade 5. That means that he's going to get the light life support lightweight blueprint, which means that we've now freed up um, Laurie Jameson, who no longer need the grade 4 blueprint pinned, of course, because we already have access to the grade 5 blueprint. So Laurie Jameson is then going to take lightweight sensors from Tiana Fortune, meaning that we are now freeing up Tiana Fortune, who actually has a large variety of really, really useful blueprints. She has a whole lot of different scanners, and she also does a lot of the different limpets all the way to grade 5. So here you can pretty much pick any limpet or scanner that you like. We already have collectors, of course, pinned somewhere else. So here you could pick, well, anything. If you do a lot of, um, I don't know, if you do a lot of fuel transfer and if you're a fuel rat then maybe that's a good thing to pin if you do a lot of mining like me well i've pinned prospectors or if you have a specific scanner that you use a lot then you can pin a blueprint that is suitable for that so that because tiana fortune has such a great variety of blueprints that's why i try to free her up so you can, can pick anything from her from her catalog of blueprints there next up we have mel brandon and we're going to look at a shield cell bank specialized blueprint this is a module that I wasn't able to fit into my bubble own list, even though I really wanted it to, because it is really a useful module, and you might be able to swap some things around. But it's pretty much only Laura Jameson that does it to an acceptable level with inside the bubble. But I decided not to include this in the original list because Laura Jameson is located inside Shirata Desra. And since, to be honest, if you have all the DS unlocked, you most likely have access to Shirata Desra. So I figured it was okay to leave the shield cell banks out because you would have to go to engineer in the station where you're most likely building your ship anyway. So it's not that big of a flight. So that's why I decided not to include shield cell banks in my bubble only list. But now that we get access to, uh, to them all the way up to grade four, Lord Jameson only does them to grade three. That's why I want to pin that out here. So, uh, so we get access to, uh, to that module as well in our remote workshop. Then we have Marsha Hicks. Here you have two options. Um, you can either go for a second multi-cannon uh, blueprint. I mean, we already have the overcharged multi-cannons um, in the original list, but you can go for a second one. You can pick anyone you like. Alternatively, you take the collector limpet. He does grade five collectors and you take the lightweight collector limpet. That means you free up the Sarge and you can then go and pick a cannon blueprint from uh, the Sarge instead. So you really have the option here is, do you want an extra multi-cannon blueprint or do you want a cannon blueprint? And the final engineer is Petra. And 
Again, the two main blueprints she does is hull reinforcement and armor. We already have armor at Celine Jane, so in this situation, I would definitely go for hull reinforcement with heavy duty. So that is my lists, but before we end, I would like to ask you to consider to go down and subscribe to the channel. I have a whole lot of really useful Elite Dangerous guides, and if you are into engineering, I have an upcoming video where I'm going to show you the absolute best combination of shield generator engineering blueprints and uh, shield boosters blueprints you can use to get the best possible shields in a variety of situations. So stay tuned for that. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.